Alright everyone, so what I'm doing today is I've come down to my local creek system and what's going to happen is um, a lot of the comments on my YouTube channel have been asking me to do primitive overnight survival videos. So what I've done today is I'm going to be staying down this creek for 24 hours and in that time I'm going to have to build a primitive hut out of mostly resources I can find down here, stay in that hut overnight, catch my own food, get my own water and pretty much do a bit of a survival video. Now I'm going to be taking six things down this creek, so if we come over here We've got an axe to cut down the trees. Now, most of the trees are going to be on the ground because there has been quite a few trees that have fallen down in the past storms that have been in this area. In case we need a few more, I'm going to be bringing this axe. We've got a knife to fill up the fish, flint to start the fire. We've got a bit of cord here just to secure up all the height so it doesn't fall down when I'm sleeping overnight. Some fishing hooks in line just to make sure that we can catch a fish. And of course, a head torch so we can walk up this creek overnight and not fall over on 30 different rocks. So pretty much what we need to do now is walk up this creek, find a place to build the shelter. So let's get into it. Right, so this spot over here, it looks pretty good. Got a good wall behind you, so it will keep you out of the weather so when I do light the fire, the wind won't be blowing the fire anywhere. And plus, it's got some nice sticks here. So I reckon I might be able to make an off the ground shelter because often at night, there'll be a lot of creepy crawlies like snakes, wild dogs, and even like centipedes that will come through here. And trust me, you don't want to be around when those guys come through. So we're gonna have to make an off the ground height. So what I'm gonna need to do now is get my ax, cut a few trees down, or find some that have already been fallen down and trim them up to make the base of this shelter. And pretty much what I'm thinking of doing is putting a stick through here to the other side there and from here to there and make a bit of a triangular shape. I'm not sure how it's going to work out, but let's start getting some trees. So if you do have vine, you could use that, but I've just brought a little bit of rope down the creek today because I didn't feel like climbing 20 meters up into a tree to just get some vine. But this should work really good. Well, basically what we're gonna do is just secure it on so it doesn't do that, exactly what it did there. So what I've found here is just a little fork. You can see that, that'll be perfect to keep this upright. So what you need to do, put it under, whichever the weak part is kick it under like this, you can see this, that is going nowhere. It's actually really starting to take shape. You can see it, it's actually gonna be a really good hut by the end of it, and I'm really excited to see the end result. So after about an hour of getting everything ready, cutting down trees, getting leaves, setting it all up, we have finally finished this hut. It is good to sleep on. I'll still probably make a few finishing adjustments before I actually sleep on it tonight. But if you come down here, take a look at that. It'll be pretty good. I'm gonna probably lie right there. So I'm gonna do the first thing right now is to get on it and test it all out. So if it falls, I'm gonna cry. It would probably be good if I did secure up all of these and if I find some vine, I will do it later. It's actually pretty comfortable. If you just laid straight on this wood, it wouldn't be too nice. But since you put these leaves down, it gives it a bit of comfort. But what we're gonna do now is set up the fire, probably go try and get some food. But yeah, take a look at that. We made the hut. <laughs> All 
Right, so there we go, we're ready for the fire. So what we're gonna do now is head off off the creek, hopefully be able to catch some fish or something that we can cook up. So the good thing about this is since we live in Australia, we do have to actually sleep up on the top bunk because there is quite a lot of things in Australia that can kill you, like snakes, spiders, scorpions, for instance. But if you're in different countries that doesn't have all those things that can kill you, you can also sleep underneath and have a bit of shelter from the rain and stuff. So you can sleep upstairs, downstairs, and if you want to stoke up the fire and can't be bothered getting out of bed, you can keep some spare wood up there, drop them on later, and they should be good. Let's get some dinner. So the next thing that we're going to do is actually make a primitive fishing rod. So you might have seen me make something like this in a previous video. So what we've done is this time we've brought some line and a hook down so we don't have to use any barbed wire or anything. But we're going to cut this down. Just like that, trim off all these leaves, tie a piece of fishing line onto the end here, and it should be good. Right, so what we've done is we've made a little groove in this stick, so we're going to thread the fishing line through and tie it off. Now, I've got some 10 pound line on here at the moment, but subject to what fish are in your river, you can use heavier or even lighter line. But 10 pound for me is pretty much an all rounder line, it catches eels, catfish, perch, but even sometimes the big eels can snap this. Tie it on the end there like that. So just to quickly run you through what's happening. You find the groove, cut it all down here. This is just a water bottle I found up on the bank. It's not primitive, but let's hope one day it is. And what you need to do, grab it like this, put it in there, make sure it's real tight in there. Chuck the bait at the end here. I'm not sure, I'll probably walk up the creek, see if I can find maybe some grubs or something that we can put in there. So we'll put this in the river with some grubs in it, chuck it out in the water, hopefully catch some little shrimp to use as bait, cast the primitive rod out, and maybe be able to catch a big eel, catfish, or perch. I'll be happy with anything. All right, so logs like this, when they're really dead, you can see this, it's just flaking off. They're perfect for little grubs, worms, anything that can get inside them. So we got this ax and we're gonna chop into it and hopefully find maybe a witchetty grub, molly grub or something like that. Oh, yep, we got one. Not the biggest one, but that'll be good bait if we get a few. All right, so we can do either one of three things. Use this guy as bait. He's not the biggest, but it guess it could still catch maybe a spangle perch or something. Or throw this guy in the yabby trap and hopefully yabby will get attracted to it and go on the trap. Or the third thing is eat it right now. I like number three. Just kidding. We're going to do number two. We're going to use him as yabby bait. Alright, so we got that little guy. We're going to chuck him in the bottle. Put the lid on. And I found this shallow pool here. It's got quite a few rocks, so it looks pretty promising. We're going to fill it up with water and hopefully within about 20 minutes or so, there'll be a shrimp in there. Right, so it's probably been 10 minutes and I can see shrimp in the trap right now. So we're going to pull it out. You can see it's not the biggest shrimp, but it's upgrading from our little yabby. You can see that right there. Little shrimp right there. Well, now we've got two options. If the shrimp doesn't work, we'll chuck on that little grub. But what I'm going to do now is cast out the little primitive rod and hopefully catch a fish. Now we wait. All right, so there's an eel sitting over in the shallows just under this rock down here. I can only see his head, but hopefully he takes the little shrimp. I think he's taken it. He snapped my line. You can see that. I hooked him in the side of the mouth there, but this line, it's only about um, eight pound, and you can see that it snapped clean off. But yeah, I think I got a bit, he's a bit stunned. I accidentally stood on his face when trying to get him. But that right there is known as the long finned eel, or my dinner. We're gonna go make a fire, cook them up for you guys. And this one, I'd probably say, would have to be about a bit over a meter long. Right, so since this guy's a bit stunned, I don't think he'll be going anywhere. So we're just gonna put him in this little enclosed off pool 
and just let him swim around for a bit. You can see him swimming off right there. He's a bit, a bit messed up. I accidentally stood on his head, which isn't too good, but we're just gonna keep him in here until we set up all the fire and everything. All right, so what we're gonna do now is cut the head off and do two fillets off this big guy. So pretty much what we're gonna do, down here it's the easiest to fill it. We'll, we'll, we will use the whole eel. We'll probably cut it up, eat half later, and um, maybe eat some in the morning and use the rest as shark bait some other time. So what I'm gonna do, I reckon I might eat a fair bit tonight, I'm pretty hungry. So we'll chop in here, just like that. We'll cut in here like that. I'll probably eat about that tonight, two big fillets. So then, not the prettiest fillet, but I'll try to get as much meat as I can. All right, so that got most of the meat, that's just the bone right there. So we got that big fillet right there. I reckon we'll cut it in half. It might be easy to cook it like that. All right, so you can see that's two nice fillets. I normally like to leave the skin on and then pick it off at the end. So what we're gonna do is how we're gonna cook them, put them in a bit of alfoil, chuck them in the coals of the fire, and they should be really good. And I've got a bit of a secret recipe that I'm gonna show you how to cook up to add to these fillets. So let's get into that. All right, so the secret recipe that I'm gonna be doing to these eel fillets is I've got some flour, salt, and some water, and I'm gonna be making what Australians know it as, damper. And all you need is a bit of salt, flour, and water, and you can add different things to it if you really want. So we got the flour, bit of salt here, add the flour and salt together, and just add little bits of water at a time, and basically knead it in until it makes a dough-like texture. It's a bit of a bonus on the top of that eel, and what you need to do, it's basically mold it up like this until it gets a bit of a doughy texture like that. And then we'll put it in our foil, chuck it in the fire, and it will be good to eat. So what I'm gonna do now is just clean this off. And I've decided to do something a bit different. Just roll it around in this. I don't know if it'll taste any better or any different, but I'll let you know after, because I have tasted eel before. Just to make it a bit, I don't even know. It probably won't taste any different. <laughs> All right, so we've got this damper here. I'm gonna chuck it in there. Put it down a bit. Now this is self-raising flour, so it will raise by itself, ironically. And we're going to flip it over, roll this up, and that will be perfect to chuck in the fire. Now we're going to do the eel fillets. So I got this fillet here. Roll her up. Fillet number one. Fillet number two. Just got the fire going, so when it lights up a bit, we'll chuck the fish and the damper in. All right, so as you can see, we got the fire going, chuck some logs in, Camp Wilson up behind us. I reckon it's gonna be pretty good tonight. I'm gonna try to keep this fire going for most of the night, until the morning anyways. Fire's roaring in about 10 minutes or so, we'll chuck these in. The damper will only cook for probably about 10 minutes, but the other fish will probably leave them in there for about half an hour. But yeah, what a night. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes since we got the fire going. These big logs are starting to die down. So we're gonna chuck these damper and fish in at the moment. This one, I'm pretty sure that's the eel. Second eel. And this one is the damper. All right, so while this eel and damper was cooking, I managed to go down, fill it up the eel, and put it in little bags so I can use it as shark bait in a couple of months when it comes back into shark fishing season. So you might even see that exact eel used as bait in one of my future shark fishing videos. But yeah, the damper, it looks pretty ready now, so we'll be able to bring it out, eat that, and eat the eel just after. So we've got these two sticks, we're gonna use them as a bit of a fork-like thing. There we have the damper. All right, so we've just pulled the damper out. We're gonna cut it down the middle, so hopefully it's as well cooked as I hope. Take a look at that. That's just made out of three simple ingredients, and it gets that good. Oh, it's really nice too. It's actually so good. I don't know why I haven't cooked it in a video before. If you were at home and not doing a primitive video like this, you can add honey or butter and everything like that. But I just like it just like this actually. So it's been about 20 minutes since we got the damper out. So these eel fillets should definitely be ready. So we're gonna grab them out right now. This one, this one's my favorite. It's been in the coals the whole time. Take a look at that. That looks really good, actually. So there is the eel that we just caught before. Cooked it up all for you guys. Now, the other fillets, they're definitely not going to go to waste. We're going to use all of that eel as bait. But yeah, here's the taste test of that big eel. 
Yeah, well that eel is much better than the last one I cooked because I think the last one in my eel catching cook wasn't cooked to perfection. But you can see if you come down here, that is like glazed on the top and everything. I'm a bit tired because I had to carry all the wood, make the whole thing, catch eels, make the fire and everything. But it's been all really worth it. This is the first time I'm going to sleep in a shelter like this. And I'm pretty excited to do it if it doesn't get too cold. So I'll stoke up the fire a bit more before I go to bed. Keep some pieces of wood so I can just drop them straight off from up at the five star hotel. And here's to hoping that the guana that came through the camp before doesn't smell the eel. But yeah, we made some damper. You can see down here, we made some eel. And doesn't that look so good? So just before I go to sleep, I wanted to make sure that you went and followed me on Instagram. I love posting on there. I post all different things, even sneak peeks before videos come out. So it would mean heaps if you went and followed me there. This is the username up here. And also, subscribe to my channel, like this video, and leave a comment down below, as that just helps me be able to make more videos for you guys, like this one right here. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. It was a real lot of fun making this video. I'm actually going to keep this camp up down this creek and probably add to it so if you go follow me on Instagram I'll make sure to keep you updated what's happening with it but yeah I've still got uh, the sleep to go and I'll catch up with you in the morning or if I wake up but yeah I'm gonna finish off this eel and go on to camp Alright, so it's about 11 o'clock at the moment. I reckon it's nearly time for me to go to sleep. As you saw what we did, we came down the creek, made this awesome hut out of just resources we found down here and a bit of rope. Managed to catch a huge eel, made some damper, cooked it up, and it tasted actually surprisingly good. And what I'm about to do now is go to sleep. I had to hang up the eel carcass over in a tree over there because there's been that goanna that we saw earlier today hanging around the camp. Yeah, I reckon I'll head to sleep soon and hopefully catch up with you guys in the morning. Moon's right above my head. Good night. It's about four o'clock. I'm sorry if I'm really sleepy. It hasn't been the best night of sleep, but it's been all right. This is the second time I've woke up, actually. The first time was at 1 a.m., and now it's four o'clock at the moment. But I'm hoping if I go back to sleep, I'll be able to sleep until the sun comes up anyways and I'll get back to you then. But yeah, I've been hearing a few things rustling around the camp at night. I think I, I turned the torch from this camera on and I'm pretty sure it was a goanna. But yeah, it was probably trying to look for that eel carcass or something. But yeah, I'm going to turn this light off, try to get a few more hours of sleep and um, get back to you in the morning. See you then. Alright everyone, so I just woke up for the second time tonight and I'm pretty sure that in about five minutes, I would have completed the 24 hour challenge, which is pretty cool. I've stayed down this creek for 24 hours, and in that time, I've managed to make an awesome hut, catch my own food, make damper, drink my own water out of the creek. And well, it's pretty beautiful. This is what I wake up to. Feel the sounds of the birds in the background and everything. And it's just awesome that even I can come down here and just do something like this. And it was a great experience. I didn't have the best night of sleep, but you know what, it was it was pretty cool. But yeah, I think I'm gonna wait another couple minutes to complete this 24 hour challenge, head back up to the house, go have a shower, wash off all these eel stinky clothes. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you wanna see plenty more videos like this to come.